Welcome back to my reading diaries, a little series in which I explore different TBR approaches each month to find different types of books and genres, avoid reading slums, and just to have fun picking out my books every month and hopefully share some cool ideas with all of you. This is episode 4, Books Around the World, Physical TBR Edition. When I did my reading journal setup this year, I actually wanted to have a dedicated page to the Books Around the World challenge, but I ended up saving it for this video. I'm happy to be taking stock of the books on my shelf for this particular challenge as well, my physical TBR, which is in line with my overall reading goal this year of really cracking down on my unread books pile. So before I pick the five books I plan to read in February and talk about these uh, a bit more, I took note of all the books I have not yet read that are on my shelf, uh, which are not from the US or the UK, because I know for sure that those two will be covered throughout the year without me really having to try. We're starting alphabetically, just a brief description of all the unread books I have on my shelf from different countries. The first country up is Albania, for which I have on my shelf Chronicles Set in Stone by Ismail Kadare, a coming-of-age story of a boy in Albania during World War II. I have, however, been in search of a copy of Broken April by the same author, which I am even more excited to read, um, so for that I would make an exception to this physical to be our list. I know we're only on the first country, but I swear this is the only exception on here. Um, Broken April is said to give a great insight into the Albanian uh, kanun, which is this ancient code of honor, and the story follows a blood feud between families, and that just sounds really fascinating to me. Next we have Bosnia and Herzegovina, for which I have The Walnut Mansion by Miljenko Djergovic, uh, which follows different generations through the wars and atrocities that took place in Yugoslavia throughout the 20th century. I've been really keen to learn more about this region's history and an intergenerational historical fiction. It seems like a great way to do that. Then we have Ireland, for which I have two books. This is Happiness by Niall Williams, which has been high on my TBR for a while, ever since I read the first page of this book in a bookstore in Dublin, and I was stunned that someone could describe rain in such a magical way. It seems like an absolutely magical tale about rain in a small village in Ireland. And then I also have Exciting Times by Nisha Dolan, a quite famous romance book, I believe, which just seems like a fun and relaxed read, um, which is a little unlike most books on this list. Then we have India, for which I have one book, namely A Burning by Megha Majumdar, which next to it being praised as a beautiful story, also is said to give a closer look into politics, gender, religion, and class in India. It follows a girl who is trying to move up in life but is accused of terrorism after a Facebook comment, and I'm just really intrigued to hear how the story will unfold. Next we have Japan, the country with the most books on this list. As I have been piling these up, I've read quite a bit of Japanese fiction in the past and I've liked it, so that's why I've bought more. We have The Quirky Earthlings by Sayaka Murata, the author of Convenience Store Woman, The Classics Norwegian Wood by Haruki Murakami, Never Let Me Go by Kazuo Ishiguro, another one by this author called The Buried Giant, which may be a little less known. And finally, How Do You Live by Genzaburo Yoshino, which was the inspiration for Studio Ghibli's latest movie, The Boy and the Huron, which I refuse to watch until I've read this, even though I've heard it's only a slight inspiration and the story isn't exactly the same. Next up, we have Finland, the book Crossing by Paitim Statovsi which actually I don't think has anything to do with Finland except the author being Finnish Kosovan, because the story seems to follow the main character Bujar as he flees his country of Albania, crossing several European cities, making their way uh, together with his friend finally up to New York City. 
We will see if Finland makes an appearance. I bought this book in Finland and it was in the Finland section, but I should have read a little more closely, I guess. Uh, but I still think it would be a lovely read. Then we have Oman, for which I have Celestial Bodies by Jokha Alharti. Um, I got this secondhand ages ago and was really excited about it, but then I heard some pretty bad reviews and it's just been sitting on my shelf ever since. I just really need to look past that and actually read it now. This story follows three sisters whose stories give us an insight into what life in Amman is like. Next we have Serbia. I picked up this copy of Landscape Painted with Tea by Milorad Pavic, um, which I think will be a fascinating read, but I also expect it to be a heavy and challenging one. So I've been keeping it for when I'm in the right mood for that. The description reads, this is a tale of a mysterious quest that is part modern odyssey and part crossword puzzle. It begins with the story of a brilliant but failed architect in Belgrade and his search for his father, an officer who vanished in Greece during World War II. The truth about his fate, some of it set in motion 2,000 years ago, and some of it by the Nazis, is reveled in the history and secrets of Mount Athos the most ancient of all monasteries perched atop its inaccessible mountain on the Aegean. Then we have the second longest list, which is for South Korea. And I think all of these books are pretty well known to the booktube community. I have Almond, a young adult book about fighting your demons, friendship and love. Pachinko, a historical fiction set in Korea and Japan. Winter in Sokcho, which is about a French cartoonist wanting to explore the real Korea, and I Want to Die But I Want to Eat Doboki, which follows the author's journey seeing a psychiatrist for 12 weeks and her self-reflections on that process. Finally, we have Syria. I have been speaking quite a bit about As Long As Eleven Trees Grow, and it is still here on my list. So let me know if you've read any of these books and if you enjoyed them or not and if you're planning to read any of these as well. So now to make my actual selection of books. I read about five books a month on average, so that's how many books I will pick. The book I've been itching the most to read is This Is Happiness, so that's going to be number one. I can't wait to read this enchanting tale about this small village and the mystery of why the rain suddenly stopped, coupled with a coming-of-age story about a boy falling in and out of love with a girl, and um, also these descriptions of this small Thai community and its traditions, quirks, strengths, and weaknesses. I would also really like to read another Ismail Kadare book, most likely Chronicle in Stone, but maybe Broken April. I also want to make a little dent in my Korea collection, and I think I will read I Want to Die, but I Want to Eat Toboki. I've just been really intrigued by this book. I think it will be a heavy one, but I've just been super curious about the writing style and also the author's reflections on therapy and this idea of struggling with whether you have the right to have these feelings of despair when other people have it so much worse. I really want to take one book of the Japan list and I'm going with Never Let Me Go. Um, this is another book I picked up secondhand ages ago, but I've been recently hearing a lot of people talk about it again and it's convinced me to read it this month. I haven't read any Dark Academia stories in a while, so this book about an English boarding school where students are kept from the outside world sounds pretty interesting. I hope to also finally, finally read As Long As The Lemon Trees Grow. It is young adult, but also feels contemporary from the description. It follows Salama Kassab, who was a pharmacy student, but when the revolution broke out in Syria, she started volunteering at the hospital and being torn between leaving her beloved country behind in order to survive or to stay and fight for her country. I'm realizing now that there isn't exactly much light reading on this list and I'm a bit worried. Maybe I'll have to adjust, but let's see how the month goes. So that was episode four of the Reading Diaries. I hope you enjoyed this video. 
please like and subscribe if you did that would really help my little channel grow thank you so much for watching and have a nice day